All right, welcome everybody to week nine, day one. Let's go over some miscellaneous stuff today. Uh, first of all, um, some of you don't know how to make a projectile weapon, so let's let's do that real fast. Um, basically, um, you know how to bind um, keys and mice events, right? Like how you can like make it so when you hit H, something happens. <clears throat> so you go over to Edit, Project Settings, Input. So if we want to make a new action mapping, we can say, um, I don't know, what kind of projectile weapon do you want to make? We'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a demo of that real fast for you guys. What do you want it to shoot? Kitties. All right, cool. So we'll call this kitty launcher. And we'll bind it to the H key, because I said H, I don't know why. And then we close that. And then here we're within the main third person character blueprint which I call main character for some reason which I always get confused on so I probably shouldn't have done it and so down here I'm going to bind an event called kitty launcher and uh, <laughs> Simba I used to do that to Ada when she was a baby she loved it I would uh, go up to Macy and be like oh Simba all that the light touches is yours yeah it's fun having kids is fun so, uh, there we go, kitty launcher. And so when we click, we want to spawn an actor from class. And so what we're gonna, this is how you make a projectile weapon. So, if you support that, <laughs> it's funny. Um, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Simba, and she, like Ada would just giggle like crazy. You know, she just liked being 10 feet in the air, I think. Um, so what you're going to spawn would be a kitty and so we don't have a kitty can we get a kitty uh, let's just disable this for now let's see if we can find a kitty uh, let's go to the epic game store library and um, what's going on here settings. Uh, really I, I already restarted you I got um, maybe we can make a kitty. New blueprint class, actor, kitty, and uh, open that up. And so let's just add some things to it. Uh, let's add a cube, and uh, let's make it point mm, one. Point one. And uh, how long is a cat? Like about a third of a meter, so like that point three. So there's that. Um, actually, it should be longer in the x direction. X is forward. Remember, it's not the case in like Blender or some other systems, but in uh, Unreal Engine, the red arrow, the x direction is the direction that's forward. So we got a thing here, and then we just need to attach like some legs to it or something like that. And uh, we need to give it a material. It's like, uh, let's see, what's a good bark? There you go. That's a cat material. Okay. So now we're gonna attach to you. We're gonna attach to you a couple more cubes. That's uh, really huge. You're way too huge. It's like point one, point one, and point one. speed Thing. 
here, way over there. Copy, paste, and it like appears way on there. It's so strange. There we go. So there's our cat. Uh, it needs a head, I guess. Uh, add component cube. 'Cause I'm not here to show you guys how to make horrible objects. Yeah, <laughs> really. Okay. Um Voila, behold the cat. <laughs> okay, so now we got a cat to launch. Um, thank you. That is a mighty fine cat, if I do say so myself. Uh, could it be a sphere with a cat face texture? Yeah, blender. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't listen to me for doing a, a model. <laughs> Trust me. Um, oh, you want me to apply that texture to it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Can I save that? Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's go save. Oh, it's a video. Um, all right, let's see here. You take snapshot, uh, and you'll be called Catface. And then I was really going off the rails a little bit, but whatever. I don't care. It's IS fifty B. Um, um, Import from desktop cat face to come in. There we go. So where did the cat go? Kitty viewport. I think it's not big, is it? color texture sample texture sample is going to be the cat face and there we go <laughs> it's how she wanted stuff <laughs> so we've got uh, <laughs> okay um, I don't even know what's happening anymore. All right. So we got cat horror here, kitty. We're going to change the thing to cat horror, which is going to horribly, uh, cause there's no UV mapping, right? So it's just going to look absolutely uh, atrocious here. <laughs> C 
save, push it out to production, we're done. All right, let's uh, drag the cat out onto the world. Oh, goodness. Um, oh, wow, that thing is tiny. scale this up a little bit. Um, 0 0.6, 2, 0 0.2, and then we're going to scale you up off the ground. So the feet are up off the ground. It's so bad. It's so bad. I love it. Okay. Come in here. All right. So there we have the cat. Is it really drawing the, the scene root on the thing? Is it really? There we go. Uh, kitty scene root. Why is that visible? See if that hides the whole thing. But it's still drawing the, the scene root. Hmm. Do you want scene root? Uh, eh, I don't know. Other. It's a little. Okay, so we got our cat. There we go. And uh, yeah, the, the the sphere is the the scene root. So it's showing you where the origin of the thing is. Um, uh, it, it doesn't appear when you're running it, so it's not it's not exactly a big deal. It's kind of annoying to me. Right. So when you play it, it's not there. It's just showing you where the the origin is of it. Okay, so we want to launch this. Okay, coming back to our main point here. So we're gonna spawn a kitty. So every time we click, we're going to spawn a kitty. There you go. Compile, uh, spawn transform. Okay. So the spawn transform, if we split this, it's going to have a position, rotation, and scale. Scale of one. Just leave that. It's fine. Uh, the rotation will be our rotation. So specifically the rotation of the camera is the rotation that it's going to come out as. Or if you want, I added an arrow component and the arrow component shows you which direction is forward. Um, so what you can do is you can drag that out and then, um, uh, yeah, so we will get the rotation of it. And so the direction the arrow is facing is the direction the kitty will be facing like that. And then our, lo our, um, the point that the kitty will come out, um, we can attach a point on this guy so we can add a scene component. So if we add a scene component, a uh, scene capture component now, scene. There we go. Um, and this will be like the firing point. So you can add a firing point and that doesn't draw at all. Basically, you can just kind of label points in space using a scene component. And so that's kind of the place where the kitty is going to come out of. I'm actually going to move it forward a little bit just in case it spawns on top of this so it doesn't explode on top of this. So you can add a scene component to, um, where'd it go? Oh, firing point. So uh, do I want it moving with the mesh or do I want it moving with a capsule? You can also go to the skeleton and add a socket on the skeleton and cause it to um, move relative to like the, um, the, the, the animation. It's like if you wanted to come out of the tip of the sword, then um, what you can do is come in. Uh, Eric, but it's not in blueprint visible. Uh, uh, Uncraft, not you. 
Um, firing point. Roll location. Go roll the rotation. Uh, compile. Viewport. Where? Where did you go? Firing point. Aha! And it's pointed the wrong way too. So let's rotate you. Ninety degrees. Because um, remember, red is forwards. All right. So that's the direction it's going to come out. So we're going to come over here and get the rotation of the firing point. Uh, no, not you. You. We're going to get the location of the firing point, and we're going to get the uh, location, rotation and location of it. Uh, get world location. No, that's set world location. Let us get world location. Thank you. Or the transform actually works pretty well too. Let's get the transform, which is <clears throat> all three of these things together, so we can recombine it. Let's do that. Okay. So a trans a world transform is a combination of um, rotation, location, uh, rotation, location, and scale. And so I'm just going to use uh, the firing points, rotation, location, and scaling. So it's that's point. And then it is going to spawn a cat in that place. So we come up here, hit play, click. Oh wait, no, H, there we go. So every time I hit H, a cat will appear in the world. And the cat is pointed in the direction that, uh, <laughs> this is quite horrible. <laughs> the cat is pointed in the direction that I was looking. Okay, so I don't, uh, yeah, high art. This is not, but uh, they can actually block the uh, the goblins from coming at us. So. <laughs> okay, so that's how you spawn an object in the world. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it, the the node is called spawn actor, and then you can spawn anything you want. You can spawn barrels. You want to make a barrel? Let's make a barrel. Um, and so now every time I play it, it will spawn a Terminator barrel, which immediately explodes on me because the terminal the Terminator barrel is this guy who chases after me and blows up when he touches me. So yeah. maybe that wasn't the best idea that I've ever had. Uh, we can spawn, um, I don't know, anything. We can spawn anything. Just go back to kitties. Um, and so if you want it to move, if you want it to be a projectile weapon, you want the kitty to be moving uh, at um, a certain speed and you want the kitty to like explode, like exploding kittens, the game. Uh, you want it to explode when it hits something. And um, so we can add a velocity to it. So your initial transform is just position, rotation, and scale. And, but we want the kitty to fly at the speed of light. Okay. And uh, maybe not the speed of light, but we want to set velocity on it. And we want to set the velocity. I don't know if we can pull you out now. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. That's the actor spawned. Set velocity of the cube work. Yeah. So we'll set the velocity. And let's just start off by setting the velocity to 980. And just see if that works. H, no. Nope. And that's because physics is not turned on on it. So let's go over to Kitty, go to Cube, simulate physics is on. Okay. Play. There we go. Take them, not me. Take them, not me. Okay. 
Yeah, a bunch of horror kitties. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, what do you guys think of that? That's pretty cool, right? All right, so uh, they simulate physics and they have gravity, which isn't always what you want. Sometimes you want rockets to just fly straight. Uh, you don't want them to move like a grenade. There's like grenade motion and there's rocket motion. So if we turn off gravity and then set the compile save and then set it to rather than tossing it straight up like we're doing, we want it to uh, come in the direction we're looking. So let's get the direction we're looking, which is from the camera. Camera. The direction we're looking is called get forward. That's the direction we're looking. And then uh, we're going to multiply that by some number. Uh, and that number we will promote to a variable called um, kitty speed. You have to compile it to make it appear over here. Kitty speed will set to a thousand, because why not? And um, spawns it on top of it. Okay. And then that will go into there. And so that is going to set the speed of the kitties equal to um, the direction we're looking. So now we've got kitty rocket launchers. They don't do anything, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of cool, all right? Can you put an animation on them or add sound? Uh, so there's a sound when they launch and when they hit the ground? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. So, kitty, um, sure. So there's a couple different ways we can do it. Um, We can add a begin play node so that when they spawn, they meow or something like that. So um, we need a meow sound. Um, all right. Testing that. We might use that as well. So uh, are you ready? There we go. Okay. Stop. Okay. You delete. Okay. Did not record. It means that my audio input is probably microphone settings. Uh, voice recorder allows it. Is the cat okay? <laughs> Meow. Meow. Okay, that one's better. You go away. Alright. So. Okay, so we got a couple of recordings here. File location. These are all M4A files. Uh, I don't want to take the time to do this. Um, I'm just going to translate one of them. Actually, I can probably drag and drop them. There we go. Wave. Uh, yeah, Unreal Engine uses Wave basically. For a second, I was I thought you were gonna record it yourself. I did. I did. These are all me. Okay. Uh, download Wave. Do, 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 do. Uh, save. Save. Here, 
I'll upload the uploadings to you in case you want to make your own cats. So you got some cat sounds now that you can use. Um, okay, so when we spawn the cat, let's randomly pick one of these. Oh, we need to import it, don't we? Okay, so let's save here. Import, and I'll just drag and drop them from the desktop over here. And into here, sure, why not? And recording 13, there we go. So, now one. Uh, what is? Who are you? I go away. Uh, now two. And now three. Okay, so we got three meows. And the cat. We're gonna. When, whenever we spawn a cat, we're going to randomly pick one of the three. So we're gonna do a random. Um, actually, we're gonna play a sound. Play a sound at location. And we are going to um, get the location of the cube. That. And we are going to randomly pick a sound. So uh, we're going to do a random int and range like this. And uh, let's go from 0 to 2. And we'll pull that out into a switch. It would have been simpler to just use one meow, but it's always good to have variation, especially in like bullet effects and things like that. And you, and you should be using um, sound cues as well, which can also, um, you know what, I'm gonna do that actually. I'll show you guys how to do a sound cue. So meow one, we're gonna create a cue out of it. Double click here, and we're going to do um, some variation uh, in here. Drag, let's see, random. Uh, oh, actually, that would actually be really good. Oh, yeah, we should be doing that, huh? Yeah, yeah, this is a better way of doing it. Okay, um, duplicate, duplicate. So rather than having to do this three times, we'll just have a sound cue that every time when you play it, it's going to randomly pick one of the three meows. This is the much better way of doing it. And then, uh, let's see here. Um, what is it? Pitch. Where is the thing I'm looking for? Modulator. Okay, so what I did was... Um, Meow one becomes meow two. Meow one becomes meow two. Right. There we go. Meow three. Okay. See, it's randomly playing one of the three meows. So, and then the modulator, um, you can make it louder and softer. Right now, they're all kind of quiet. Um, I don't know if I have my thing turned down too much. I'm actually going to make it randomly between one and two times louder. And I'm going to make the pitch randomly go between 80% and 120%. So it'll sometimes be much higher pitch, sometimes much lower pitch. And that stops it from being boring. It's, it's really annoying for, um, for there to be uh, the same sound over and over again. Especially for things like footsteps, um, bullet ricochets, things like that, you really want to use it. You want to turn it into a cue, and then you can use a modulator on it, which will randomly make them sound slightly different, or or quite different if you if you want. Um, and there's a lot of things you can put on here, a lot of special effects you can put on to a sound cue. Um, sound volume multiplier one. Okay. Um, you can set attenuation settings, which control how it goes through walls and things like that. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. I'm just going to save that and leave that there. And I'm going to rename it not meow one q I'm just going to call it meow q And so meow q is going to randomly play one of these three meowing songs here. And uh, 
then we don't need to do a random anymore. Yay, let's make life simple. And so we're simply going to play, when we get created, we are going to play meow mix. Meow, 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 meow. Okay, so now when we come in here and launch it, <laughs> I must go, my people need me. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, come back, coming back into Kitty. Uh, we should probably set a lifetime on it, initial lifespan of like three seconds. And so if the, uh, if the kitties hang around, you see that right there, initial lifespan. So if we uh, have a kitty that lasts for longer than three seconds, they will go away like that. That keeps you from losing too much frame rate. Okay. Uh, bonus meow. <laughs> I hope this is a this is a, an amusing day for you all. Um, okay. Um, what else? Uh, we need it to explode right when it touches something. So when uh, when this thing touches something, we need it to blow up. Uh, let's see here. Cube has got collision on it. We need to turn collision on if you want it to hit something. Or what we can do is we could add a um, like a sphere around it, so it has like a, a, a collision sphere around it, so that when that touches something, it blows up. Either way, uh, either way will work. You can either do overlap or, or on hit. Either way works. Um, so I guess we're not going to do you. So we'll just do event hit. So when we touch something, um, we are going to blow up. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is cast to main character, because if we hit the main character, I don't want it to explode. Otherwise, when it is not the main character, I want it to blow up. So I will spawn system allocation. So I'm just going to have the cat explode when it hits something. Hit location is the place where the explosion is going to take place. And it's going to do the barrel exploder I just made in the last class. And what do you not like? Oh, we need the other person here. So if the other person we hit is not the main character, then blow up. So we're gonna spawn a system and then destroy actor self. And so um, this makes it a, a rocket launcher, kitty rocket launcher. Okay. Oh. Interesting, it's not. It's not a. It's not blowing up when it hits the ground, interesting. But it blows up when it hits actual things. It's funny. Vent hit, get player character, not equal. Yeah, that works too, I guess. Um, okay. So if uh, branch, if the other is not equal to uh, what do, you do player character. It's no the, the casting was working just for whatever reason it's not generating hit events when it hits that oh what that worked that time weird yeah it's like skipping off the ground oh you 
You know what? I bet it's just the, um... I think it's because only the uh, root, let's see here, self, their collision, overlap events, cube, simulate physics, generate hit events, collision presets. Default, let's try that. This is the worst thing about Unreal Engine is that when things don't work, um, you have to you have to sit there and like figure out okay which level of the hierarchy is causing this thing to not um, to not uh, generate the uh, the hit event. You know, is it the surface there? Uh, you know, what exactly is causing it to not generate the hit event? Um, basically out of time, so let's see here. Lock all, no collision. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe these things, yeah, simulate generates hit events. Just turn it on for all of these, these guys as well, because it might be it's hitting the face, and the face isn't set to generate hit events, so just do this. Or we can do it the, real, the way I was going to do before, which is to just when it, add a sphere trigger to it. Let's try this. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah. The problem was we only had a collision on the body of the cat. There we go. So we got a cat rocket launcher now. Currently doesn't do anything. It just explodes and looks cool. So main character spawns a kitty, gives it a velocity, and then it then the cat does the rest of it. So um, today's been stupendous. I, I I hope you mean that not it, and stupendous as in you've been stupefied by the boringness of this lecture. <laughs> Making a cat an is fifty b. Let me see this. Is that from uh, the flesh bit thing? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So we got cats uh, that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I wonder if I can add a brush instead, make this a little better looking. Can I add a brush to it? Um, no. Much better. Very, very realistic looking. Oh, so the, the yeah, right. The uh, the cone isn't attached to the uh, the rest of it. Whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm just being silly now. Okay. So, uh, what if we wanted to make a heat-seeking rocket? We got four minutes. What if we wanted to make a heat-seeking rocket? What if we wanted to have the cat uh, home in on the uh, the Terminator? Hmm? Right? 
Okay. Or on a goblin, one or the other. Um, well, that makes more sense. What do you think? What, what do you want to do? What do you want the cats to zoom in on? Do you want them to zoom in on the sock goblins or on the uh, Terminator barrel? The goblins? Okay. All right. Uh, now, um, what we can do is under event tick, we can have it um, move towards the nearest um, goblin. Okay. So um, maybe, maybe, how do we want to do this? Maybe, rather than doing that, maybe we can make it laser guided. How does that sound? How does that sound? Like, you draw a, a, a dot and then the cats will home in on it. What do I have bound to right click right now? Do I have anything? Okay, why don't I make right click the cat launcher? It's a little awkward hitting H. H isn't a very useful key. The location of a goblin and send the kitty to it they chase a laser pointer yeah i don't know like we can make it so it locks on to a goblin like if you if you right click i don't know let me think like how do you how do you want it to work let's put it that way because we could i mean there's a lot of goblins in the world and so they would sort of i, I kind of want to be able to designate like one goblin as like get it and then all the cats kind of go like that, right? And I'm going to set the lifespan of the cat um, up to like, I don't know, 30 seconds or something. Zoom in or trace line. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so maybe on the main character, I can add a new uh, project setting input. We can call it designate target. And maybe we hit the Q key. And then that will, like if we're pointed at a goblin, then that goblin and all the cats will go like that at it. Okay. So for the player, uh, player, we need a new variable. The variable will be designated target, which will be public because other blueprints are going to be looking at it. And this will be of type goblin. Mm, sock goblin, yep, that's what it was. Sock goblin. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Compile. Save. Uh, it starts off set to nothing. So when we do, uh, let's get the rocket launcher. And line that up. Line that up. There we go. Okay. So now we need a thing to designate designate target. So when we hit what was it, Q? When we hit Q, if we're looking at a sock goblin, then that sock goblin is set as our target, and then all the cats in the world will fly at it. Oh, and we should have it do damage too, right? It's like when this thing explodes, let's just have it do damage. Why not? Uh, radial damage. Uh, the goblins do take damage, so. Uh, base damage, mm, I don't know, 50. In a radius of three meters or something. And the hit point is the origin. Okay. Uh, this will damage us though, so we need to ignore player character zero. Okay. So player character zero will get ignored by the radial damage. Okay. Uh, the rest of that looks fine. Okay. So now the cats can. Let's test that real fast. So the goblin, the cats can now kill the goblins. Okay. 
I don't know how much of the audio is coming through, but it's kind of funny. Okay. So that worked out just fine. Um, next. Uh, we're out of time. Damn. Oh, do you, guys, do you guys want to go a little bit over to do the cat swarm? So, and if you, you got if you got work, it's fine. Okay. So, um, I guess we can recompile that. We don't need you. All right. So for event tick. Okay. So first of all, the main character when they hit the button, we're going to do a line trace. And what we're going to do is, uh, let's see here, what do we want? I'm going to do a line trace for objects. So it's going to ignore, it's going to ignore anything that's not a sock goblin. So let's see if I can designate that. Maybe not. Eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, line trace by channel. AC back on. Okay, so the starting location is going to be firing point. You. And uh, so the uh, starting location is going to be firing point, which is that spot in front of us right there. Uh, might be, eh, whatever. Might be a little too far in front, but either way. Um, and then it will travel in a direction. So we're going to shoot a line in the direction we're looking. The direction we're looking is the camera. Get forward vector. That's the direction we're looking times the range of this thing, which doesn't exist yet. So we're going to right click promote to variable. And this will be called laser designator range. And that will be compiled and saved. And the range will be hundred meters and we're going to add that to our starting location uh, vector plus vector so we've got our starting location then our starting location plus the direction we're looking times 100 meters it's going to be the ending point like that trace visibility sure okay uh, five seconds sure so now every time I hit Q, uh, nothing's happening. <laughs> oh. I said it to Q, right? Okay, designate target Q. Let's try doing a print string. To make sure that that is working. Compile, save, save, play. It's working, but I'm not seeing the debug come out. Yeah, well, it's because I didn't draw it. <laughs> okay. There we go. So we're shooting, uh, we're shooting lasers, and if it hits the goblin, then who is it going right through the goblin? I think it might be. Oh no, it is. It'll hit the goblin. Okay. Um, okay. So if the split this. Task to sock goblin. So if the person we hit, if the person we hit is output hit hit actor, if the person we hit 
is in fact a goblin, then we are going to set our designated target to be the sock goblin, the, the sock goblin that was hit. Okay. So if we hit anything else, it's just going to do nothing. But if our laser hits the sock goblin, then all the cats will be like, that's the one. And then they'll move towards it. So I think that's good for the laser designator. Uh, okay, and then um, uh, it shouldn't take till five. Um, we're almost done with this. So now uh, event tick. Um, maybe not every frame, but maybe like every ten times a frame. Maybe we will update it so that it'll move its velocity towards the designated target. Uh, we can we can play with this value, but um, we'll, we'll just add in a delay node here. The delay node will not allow the event tick. So okay, yeah, fifth of seconds fine. Let's promote this to a variable, and you're going to be called uh, think delay, and five times a second. That's fine. So five times a second, it will um, get the direction towards the designated target if it exists. It might not exist. And, uh, and then set its velocity to point towards it. And uh, we'll make a new variable called hunting speed. So that will be a float, and that'll be how fast it moves towards the target. So maybe we can do something cool here, like Like maybe the cats will come out like really slow and stuff. Uh, kitty speed, like maybe they'll come out at like a, a low speed. And then once, uh, yeah, that's a little low. Uh, and then like once we designate a target, then the cats will like pounce on them in a giant horde. I don't know, it'll be fun. So uh, yeah, if you attach a delay node to event tick, then it'll slow down the ticking to whatever that duration is, in this case, 0.2 seconds. So every 0.2 seconds, it's going to think. And what we want to do is get player character or get player pawn. Uh, no, that's not a white pen. Get player pawn. So what we're going to do is get the designated target. cast to main character. Yeah. So every 0.2 seconds, we're going to get the main character. Probably, no, nah, we don't want to do this here. Uh, begin play here. Uh, get player character. Get player pawn. Right. Uh, Cast two. And character, this is just an optimization so that you don't do this over and over again. Basically, we're just going to save this uh, promote to variable. So we're just going to save this as the main character. So we don't have to keep getting the player pawn, casting it over and over again for every cat. We'll just have it saved once. So there we go. So we got the main character here. So we're going to get main character. And now we are going to get the designated target off of it. And we have to see if that's valid because they might not have, they might not actually have a, um, a target, right? When you, when you run for the first time, uh, live link source handle, no, not, not you. What are you doing? That is valid. So if the sock goblin we have designated is valid, it might not be. It could be dead, or it could um, not have been targeted yet. Then we'll do a branch off you. So if the if we have a valid target, then we're gonna zoom in on our target. So we're gonna 
set the set the linear velocity on cube. That's our root, and the velocity is going to be linear algebra, right? So we're going to have to use the powers of linear algebra here, and the power of linear algebra is we need to get our um, designated target location. Uh, where are there so many? Uh, get world location. It's body. Sure, why not? Okay, so we're going to get the location of the goblin and we're going to subtract from that our location. Uh, cube. Location. Do you guys remember this, the displacement vector? So target's location minus our location. You normalize that to get a direction pointed at it. And then now we have here a unit vector pointing at the goblin that's been designated. And so we're going to multiply this by hunting speed. And that is our... That is going to scale. Um, so we, we have a unit vector pointing at our target. We then scale it up uh, to the high speed of hunting speed, which is 20 meters per second. And then that's our new velocity. So that should work. I know that was a lot of stuff to go over at once, but let's see how this works. So when, we, when you launch the cats, the cats are actually just very slow. And then when we designate a target, designate a target, the cats all come flying down. Oh, that was amazing. That was so amazing. Okay, again, again. So cats in the air. What are they hitting? Oh, they're hitting each other, probably. All right, cats are in the sky, and we designate this as a target, and the cats come flying in. Oh, oh it's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> and and they'll, they'll hunt them, too. Um, hmm. I need to... I need to like get like a elevation. Hmm. Yeah, let's try this. Um, let's go up. Let's go up here, maybe. Okay. Okay. So we got all these cats up in the sky, and then I'm gonna designate that guy as my target, and then watch. Uh, dang it! They all come flying. You see how they're homing in? After the guy's dead. Uh, it doesn't change their velocity again. So maybe we could like be like, if, if there's no valid target, just like um, come to a stop or something. I don't know. It kind of looks cool right now, right? So we designate that as our target, and the cats just come flying in on it. So we just have our swarm of cats up in the sky. Targeted. We should probably have the cats not explode on each other also. Let's add that in. Because I, I am liking this right now. This is really funny. Uh, this is one of the greatest days in the history of IS 50B, I have to say. Um, hmm. So if it's not valid, do we want it to just keep flying to that location? Because it does look kind of cool. Or we can have them like swoop off and like go into the sky or something. I don't know. Uh... uh <laughs> uh, either way will work um what do you think should they fly back up or just because right now when the goblin dies they don't change their velocity so that you just keep seeing cats just like into into the location we do need to make it so that if it is not a player character and uh, we also want to make sure they're not a cat um cast to kitty pull this off so we're going to ignore any hits that are to other cats because right now the cats are actually running into each other and exploding. So if it is not a cat, then we will continue on. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, see, they're not blowing up on each other now. I 
I summon the swarm of cats. You guys ready for this? <laughs> there should be some more goblins up here. Yeah, there they are. Here they're coming for me. Another one back here. No, I think I got them all. Oh, well, that was still pretty fun. They're just going to go for 30 seconds and then vanish. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, that, that's it for today. So um, I hope you guys saw kind of like how you can make a projectile weapon. Uh, to summarize, uh, don't... <laughs> You know, do do better, uh, do better, <laughs> do, do better artwork than this, <laughs> please, for all, for the love of all that's holy and sacred. This is like a seraphim cat from the Bible, you know, multiple eyes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So what we're do so in short, uh, we bind it. We bind a key to launch um, a projectile, and uh, you call spawn. You have to give it a. Um, you have to give it a location, rotation, and scale, which I'm just getting from a scene component I added. You don't have to do this. Um, there's lots of other ways of doing it, uh, but that's an easy one. So what you do is you just attach a scene component to your actor, and that's the spot that the bullets come out of, essentially. So, um, so then that spawns it with a, a location, rotation, and scale. Then you also have to give it a velocity. You have to make sure physics are turned on also. And I give, I give the velocity based on the forward vector of the camera, the direction we're looking. Uh, and I, I that's a unit vector. It's a centimeter long vector pointing in the direction we're looking. I scale that up um, based on the speed of the kitty uh, by 400. So they're slow to begin with. And that's it. And then they just are kind of doing their thing. Then uh, every tick which is once every uh, five times a second, which is probably too much. It probably doesn't need to be quite that fast. But um, it'll the, the cats will actually kind of curve around, like if they miss a target. Um, like we haven't been able to see that yet because we're not dodging. But like if we had a multiplayer game, well, because I've done this before, right? You'll, you'll actually see the rockets like curving around and like trying to come back and stuff like that, which is kind of fun as well. Um, it's like the Macross missile swarm kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, five times a second, it's going to lock it. If, we ha if you have a target designated, then it figures out the direction towards the target. It normalizes it to get a unit vector pointing at the target. It scales it by the hunting speed, which is uh, 20 meters a second, and then it will fly at the target at 20 meters a second. And it just, every five times a second, it's updating its physics when the um, target is valid. Once the target dies, then the cats lose their, their lock on. Um, when they hit something, we ignore hits on other kitties. We ignore hits on players. Uh, this could have been a cast to third-person character, or uh, main character as well. Um, when we hit, we spawn a system. That's a Niagara system. It's just a little particle effect. Looks kind of cool. We do radial damage to do damage to everything. They can take damage, ignoring the player, because I don't want friendly fire from these cats. They'll kill me pretty quickly as well. Then the cat goes away. And when the cat spawns, uh, it plays a sound. Oh, do we have a cat in the world? Is that why we're hearing a meow? There's a meow right there. Is there a cat in the world somewhere? It's meowing like when we launch. It's interesting. Is there a cat somewhere? I don't see. See any cats in the world? Lock on. <laughs> Do I have any left? There's actually some fun gameplay, by the way, where you can like toss some, you know, 
satellites up in the air and then like designate your prey and then they just come hammering down out of the sky like that's actually fun gameplay to be to be perfectly honest like you just have a reserve force up in the sky and you're like get him and then it goes you know it's like in like an anime or something you know so all right um yeah so basically when we begin playing we play a meow and that meow cue is set up to randomly play one of three highly realistic meowing sounds. Um, and then we, this is a little bit of an optimization here. So if you're gonna be doing something lots and lots and lots of times a second, like five times a second times the number of cats, um, you don't wanna constantly get player pawn and cast to, you know, you wanna just save that as a variable to save a little bit of time. And so if the designated target is valid, it's gonna attack, otherwise it does its thing. And so, yeah. So that's what we did today. You guys got till Thursday to make some sort of projectile based weapon. It could be a rocket launcher. It could be a nail gun from Quake. You know, there's the sky is the limit when it comes to these kinds of things, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. So I hope you guys have fun. Hope you had fun today and uh, hope, uh, hope you're going to be able to put this together. There should be enough knowledge in your heads and in this video to make a projectile based system. That is it. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to go hang out with Mason now, who was the first ACM president. He uh, is going to ask me about college. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys.